Perfect numbers is a topic with a really long history. So what are perfect numbers? Let sigma n be the sum of all the divisors of n. So n is perfect when it has the following property. Sigma n is 2n. So I add up all the divisors, I get twice the number I started with. So here are some examples. When n is 6, the sum of all the divisors of 6, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6. And you notice the proper divisors add up to 6. And then we have this other 6. We have 12, and that's 2 times 6. So 6 is perfect. Well, let's try n is 28. The sum of the divisors is this, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14. This is 28. 28 plus 28, well, that's 2 times 28. So 28 is perfect, just like n is 6. So perfect numbers are interesting because there's uh, several very notorious unanswered questions about them that I'll talk about later. The first fellow who proved something really interesting about them is Euclid, who proved the following thing. There we go. If mp is a Mersenne prime, then 2 power p to the minus 1 times mp is a perfect number. Okay, and you recall from last video, mp is 2 power p minus 1. And in general, mn, this, this may be prime, remember, may be prime if n is prime. Okay, but, but it's never prime if n is composite. So we don't really want to think too much about the composite n. So let's just take n as p, n is always prime. So at least then um, the Mersenne number has a chance of being prime. So Euclid said that if indeed it is prime, then I can make a perfect number out of it. So this, this gives us a way to find perfect numbers by finding Mersenne primes. So when p is 2, that's the first prime, 1 is not prime, the Mersenne number is 3, but that's prime, so I should be able to get a perfect number, and if I plug in uh, 3 into this formula here that Euclid discovered, yeah, I get 6, a perfect number. Let's keep going. Okay, the next prime is p is 3, my Mersenne number is 7, but that's prime, so this is a Mersenne prime, and so yeah, I should get a perfect number, and indeed 28 corresponds to this Mersenne prime. Next, p is 5, that leads to a Mersenne prime of 31, so I should get a perfect number, and indeed this is perfect. This one was known to Euclid. p is 7, this gives me a Mersenne number 127, that is prime. And so this number here is perfect, 8,128, probably also known to the ancients. Now let's try the next one. P is 11, that's prime, but this is not a prime. This 2,047 is not a prime number. And it turns out that the perfect number associated with this 2 million and so on is not perfect at all. So it's the perfect number associated with this is not perfect. So this is not perfect. I checked this with Maxima. I added up all the divisors and now it's not perfect. The next one, P is 13. This one is prime, so I should get a perfect number. And I get this 33 million 550,336. And this is perfect. I checked it with Maxima. I don't know if the ancients knew about that one, though. So that was the main result for a long time. Every prime Mersenne uh, number it leads to a perfect number, and this perfect number is even. It's always even because of these powers of 2. But we have, uh, in more recent centuries, another result that every even perfect number um, is of the form 2 power p minus 1 times mp, where mp is prime. And so it goes both ways. Now we know the two imply each other, they're equivalent. Whenever you have a Mersenne prime, you have a perfect number. Whenever you have an even perfect number, uh, you have a Mersenne prime. Now these results don't apply to the odd perfect numbers. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Now let's prove Euclid's part of the theorem. For this, we will need a property of the function 
sigma, the sum of the divisors of n. When two numbers are coprime, m and n, uh, the GCD is 1, then I can do this. I can distribute the sigma across multiplication. So sigma has this property called multiplicative. It's a multiplicative number theory function. So uh, other ones that have this property are the Euler phi function, the number of divisors, uh, and the Mobius function. They all have the same multiplicative property. As an exercise, I'd like you to prove this property that when m and n are co-prime, then this must be true. And it's not hard to prove, just use contradiction. There are many uh, ways to prove this, uh, many variations on proofs you can see on the, on the internet. But I think if you use contradiction, you'll get something more elegant than what I have seen. So it's not a difficult thing to do, and it's very interesting to think about. Just assume it's not true, assume that this is true, and assume that this is, this is not true, and then uh, see what happens. Okay, so Euclid's theorem begins by assuming that MP is a prime Mersenne number. Okay, and because MP is prime, then MP has to be greater than or equal to 3. So MP is never even, right? So let's look at this thing here, 2P pi power mi P minus 1, <laughs> 2 power P minus 1, MP. Well, these two uh, factors, 2 power p minus 1 and mp, they have GCD1 because mp is prime It's all, and it's odd, greater than or equal to 3, and 2 power p is just powers of 2, so the GCD has to be 1. So I can now apply our wonderful multiplicative property, and I get sigma 2p minus 1 mp, and that's equal to like so. Okay, and we can now calculate these two components separately. What are the sums of the divisors of 2 power p minus 1? Well, the prime powers are easy to figure out. It's 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared. All these divide 2 power p minus 1, and the last one to divide it is 2 power p minus 1 itself. And this is a geometric sum. This is 2 power p minus 1 over 2 minus 1. And that is 2 power p minus 1. Okay, great. And this, the next one is very cute. Watch this. Well, we know that mp is prime because the theorem assumes mp is prime, and prime numbers only have two divisors, one and itself. Okay, great. So now I can go back to computing this over here, and I get 2 power p minus 1 plus 1 plus mp. Okay, now I do a little bit of algebra. And I get this, and now I can rearrange things a bit, 2 power p minus 1 plus 2 power p mp minus mp, but 2 power p minus 1, this thing, that's mp plus 2 p mp minus mp. So I'm very lucky that the mps go away. And watch this, this is really beautiful, 2 power p mp, and this I can factor out a 2 times 2 power p minus 1 mp. So if this is my number x, uh, well, that's the same as this x. And so I've proved that sigma x is 2x. OK, this is times, not x. So uh, x is perfect. So therefore, 2 power p minus 1 mp is perfect. And it's even, an even perfect number. That's significant for the next part of, the, the, of these theorem, the Euler part. So that's beautiful proof. I think everyone should know this. It's an absolutely beautiful classic number theory proof that dates back to the time of Euclid. And now for Euler's contribution to the perfect numbers theorem. If m is an even perfect number, then m is 2 to the power of p minus 1 mp where mp is a Mersenne 
or Zen prime. And of course, P is also prime because we proved in the last video that you only get a Merzen prime sometimes when P is prime. Okay, let's try to prove this. So M is even. So because M is even, I can do the following. I can factor out. There is some K such that I can do this. M is 2 power Ka. So I factored out all the 2s and I'm left with an odd. I've seen this in a lot of proofs. They, they uh, often do this with a number, factor out all the 2s. This is interesting because the GCD of these two things is, of course, 1. Now, since m is perfect, sigma m is 2m. So I can start calculating sigma of m. Sigma of m is sigma 2 power ka, and that's sigma 2k times sigma a. Why did I do that? Because GCD is 1, so I can split them up this way. And that's 2 times m, which is 2 power ka. So I get this formula here, like this, sigma 2 power k, sigma a. This is sigma 2 power k plus 1 a. So now let's look at this more carefully. It's easy to evaluate this thing here, this part, because it's easy to know these divisors. 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared all the way up to 2 power k. And I use geometric sum to get 2 power k plus 1 minus 1. So that's easy. It's just the geometric sum. So now my relationship looks like this, and this is kind of the critical thing that Euler saw. And uh, okay, let's examine this. So this has to be odd. Why does this have to be odd? Because m is even. So if m is even, then 2k plus 1. Okay, m is even means mm, m is 2ka. So k has to be greater than or equal to 1. So that means 2k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 4. So this is this is odd. Okay. Like it's never 0, so it can't be an even 0. Now, this is always even. It's just powers of 2. And this is odd. Okay, at this point, I had made an egregious mistake <laughs> in my last video. Okay, and I'm very happy that a viewer pointed it out to me. And after he pointed it out, I deleted the video in a fit of flaming rage. But I'm okay now, and I'm, I'm going to do it again. So thank you, viewer, for pointing out uh, what I was doing wrong. And let's use the viewer's argument instead of what I had done in my previous video. So the viewer's argument is really good, in fact. And it goes like this. If this is even, the right-hand side, then this has to be even. Simple as that. Okay. So sigma a is even. And if that's the case, let's think about this. So this is the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side. If that's the case, well, 2 power k plus 1 minus 1 divides the left-hand side. And therefore, 2 power k plus 1 minus 1 divides the right-hand side. Okay, but this is just powers of 2. It's even. There's no odd component uh, factor in this at all. So it must be that 2 power k plus 1 minus 1 divides a. And this is like the critical thing that Euler saw. Okay, so with this, we're able to prove what we need to prove. So now let's isolate sigma a, put all the other factors on the other side. And we get, we get this. But this is also equal to the sum of divisors because that's the definition of what sigma a is. And we know one of those divisors has to be a. And we know another divisor. It's 2k plus 1 minus 1. But I won't put that in here just yet. I'm going to put a over 2k plus 1 minus 1. That's also a divisor. 
Why did I do that? Why didn't I just put 2k plus 1 minus 1 in here? Because it will turn out that 2k plus 1 minus 1 is actually a. Okay, so there are uh, there may be other divisors. I hope not. Let's see if there are other divisors. Okay, I'm going to bring this to the same denominator. Uh, plus a over 2k plus 1 minus 1 plus others. Now, what happens here is this a cancels out, one, uh, one of them cancels out, and I get a 2 power, okay, I'll write it this way, 2 power k plus 1 a over 2k plus 1 minus 1 plus other divisors. Right, so let's compare these two like this. And we see that the other divisors are actually, they don't exist, so they're equal to zero. Uh, well, the divisors are not zero. The sum of all these divisors are zero because they don't exist. So in fact, A has only two divisors. Okay, a and a over 2k plus 1 minus 1. Now, if a number has two divisors, then therefore a is prime. Uh, only primes have two divisors. So one divisor has to be a itself, and the other divisor has to be 1. So therefore, we have proved that a is 2k plus 1 minus 1, and furthermore, a is prime. So a is a Merzen prime, mk plus 1. And so we have finally proved that it, an even perfect number is 2 power k mk plus 1. But, I mean, we might as well put p is k plus 1 a prime. It has to be prime. k plus 1 has to be prime. And we proved that in the previous video. So we end up with m is 2 power p minus 1 mp. And mp is a Merzen prime. Wow, what a fantastic argument. A beautiful trick here. I, I like this idea with uh, proving the other divisors don't exist. That's really cool. And thank you very much to the viewer who pointed out my uh, horrible mistakes in the previous incarnation of this video. Now for some concluding thoughts. The Euclid-Euler theorem that we just proved shows there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the even perfect numbers and the Merzen prime. So this leads to some interesting questions. So how many perfect numbers are there? And notice that because it's a one-to-one -one correspondence, it's like asking how many Merzen primes are there. And here I've got to restrict myself to the even perfect numbers because that's what we proved. We proved it about even perfect numbers. So how many even perfect numbers are there? And as of now, uh, there are 52 known ones. Uh, okay, so another question is this. Do the even perfect numbers go on forever? Or are they finite? That's the same as asking uh, how many Merzen primes are there? Do they go on forever? And the answer to this is that it's unknown. Believe it or not, this is actually completely unknown. <laughs> are there any odd perfect numbers? All we've been talking about are the even ones. What about the odd perfect numbers? Is there such a thing? And the answer is unknown. We have no idea. If there is even one, we don't know. There could be an infinite number of them, or there could be None of them, we, we, have, we no, don't have any idea at this moment. Well, that was our excursion into classical number theory. It's a very nice topic. I hope to do more videos about it, and I hope you enjoyed it. So like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.